Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 9 of Q-Tech. Last episode we got our refined storage system up and running with up to 128,000 items. Ooh, that's a lot of potential items. Next up, I would like to get auto crafting working. So refined storage can do all the auto crafting things that applied logistics can do. And I would like to use that to be able to, for example, request machines or uh, have it do passive crafting with some of the slower machines, like the off alloy smelter. So uh, you've probably heard me complain enough times about how slow that alloy smelter is. Well, it's definitely not the slowest machine I've ever used. I think the Greg Tech Blast Furnaces probably get that honor. And for the Greg Tech Blast Furnaces, if uh, you haven't watched my various Greg Tech series, I store those items, or I don't craft those items on demand. I craft them ahead of time because they're so slow. So I'll probably end up taking a similar approach for most of those alloy smelter recipes. But um, in any event, before we get to that, we have to actually be able to auto craft the machines itself. So with any, like any other uh, auto crafting system, the first thing you teach the auto crafter to make is auto crafting components. Again, that's how you start the robot revolution, right? You teach your robots how to make more robots. Much like with applied energistics, there are two types of crafting recipes. You have your 3x3 crafting grid and your processing recipes. So your crafting grid recipes are just stuff like, uh, you know, any of these recipes. You can directly import them and then encode the recipe. Um, and your processing recipes are for processes that require an external machine, right? Like, uh, well, here. This, this process, smelting, you can encode this recipe and it you know, looks like this. To handle your regular crafting recipes, you just need a crafter. Um, the crafter is both, it, it functions like the, uh, like it can do crafting on its own. But if you want to do uh, processing recipes, you need to point the crafter at a machine. So in that case, the crafter acts more like a Pyrogistics interface. Um, let's start by setting up a handful of crafters to handle our 3x3 recipes. I've encoded the recipe for the crafter and its uh, subcomponents. So looks like I have all the subcomponents available right now. But one convenient thing about refined storage over applied Pyrogistics is that you don't need crafting CPUs to actually do your crafting. You just get to craft, which is very convenient. It has these blocks, uh, these specifically, that look like the crafting CPUs from Applied Logistics, but these are actually just storage blocks. They're basically like a, you know, 64,000 item chest, right? It's like a drive, except you don't have to actually put it into a, uh, or it's like one of these, where are they? Yeah, the, the storage drives, but uh, you don't have to actually put them in a drive bay. Um, so anyways, let's make... A couple more of these. Each one, kind of like with Applied uh, Energistics, again, holds up to, I think this is nine recipes. So you need one per nine recipes, um, which is the same number as an interface holds. So if you don't point them at a machine, they just do three by three crafting. If there is a machine here, you know, if this were, say, uh, a furnace, let's see if I set this to chest mode i think i can place it if this were a furnace you could push items into it and it would do furnacey things the next terminal i want to make is the crafter manager in practice this just lets you see all the items that are in your various crafters so this is much like the interface terminal in applied energistics all right so now we have a couple crafters that are capable of doing these 3x3 three three recipes, that's great and all, but most of the hard crafting work is actually done through processing. So let's set up some processing automation. Maybe I'll start with, um, actually let's start with this dissolution chamber here, because this is one of the more annoying machines to set up. Uh, it doesn't have particularly smart input, and like uh, it'll keep inputting items even if there's no valid recipe, and it uses a fluid. So this is a good chance to showcase one of the one of the strengths of refined storage. In order to encode a fluid recipe, so in this case I want to make processor bindings, which are pink slime, plastic sheets, and a little bit of essence makes a processor binding. I encode the recipe just by importing it, but you can click the type button here to switch it to fluids as well. So there's essence as well as items. Save it. You can see there's your pattern. We want to take this pattern, put it in our crafter, 
And again, this crafter is now pointed towards our dissolution chamber, so it uh, automatically gets named appropriately. And now we can craft processor bindings. However, if I do this, it'll say it doesn't have any essence. So I just have to hook up our essence tank with a, uh, a external storage. These are uh, have two modes, or item and fluid mode. So depending on what mode you have it in, it determines which you know what's actually stored. So, like I mentioned, I place an external storage on fluid mode on our fluid tank here, which is now full, by the way. Our uh, mob farm is functional, though laggy, but functional. Um, I realized that uh, the piece of dirt I put here to keep the light out keeps getting stolen by an Enderman. But I guess that's fine. If uh, Enderman can actually get out through that, I think. Or maybe they can. I don't know. Um, but they don't seem to, the Enderman aren't picking up the cobblestone. So the, they, the other mobs definitely can't get out. In any event, if I now make processor bindings, let's see. Uh, we should be able to craft a lot of these. Yeah. And off it goes. So now the materials get put in here. Now I did mention that this machine will allow extra input in. Um, but if you give it a valid recipe, it stops accepting input. So I guess it's not like uh, we don't need to take a we don't need to use any of the breadstone mode behavior. But um, yeah, this just automatically crafts these processor bindings. Now it's a little on the slow side, um, but unfortunately, this machine does not accept the industrial foregoing update upgrades. So nothing to be done, I guess. We do have the option of doing this as a passive craft instead of an on-demand craft, but it crafts 16 at a time, so I don't know. I don't mind waiting 25 seconds to get 16 of them, I guess. The next machine I wanted to set up bottle processing for was the alloy smelter. So while my long-term plan involves having a bunch of passive crafting alloy smelters, for now I definitely need to use the alloy smelter just to do some auto crafting so I can make machines and stuff like this quartz enriched iron, which is used all over the place in refined storage. However, um, the alloy smelter has four input slots, and if I just allow items to be put into here, they'll get jammed. Let me demonstrate. If I get rid of that comparator and re request quartz enriched iron, um, I forget how to, there's a button to click to, to request without having to take the items out. In Applied Energistics, it's middle mouse click, but apparently it's different here. Whatever. Uh, if I, say, request a stack of this stuff, you see how first it has... Well, nope, I have enough. I need to request enough that it tries to make... Uh, here we go. That it tries to make refined iron first. So it'll try to craft refined iron as well as quartz enriched iron in the same machine. So when I hit start, it puts it all in here, and the machine's all jammed up. To fix this, you would use a blocking mode type behavior, right? You tell it to stop putting in items when, you know, there's items in the input. However, refined storage does not have blocking mode. It has redstone mode, which typically with a little, you know, hackiness, you can make it behave similarly. And that's what this little redstone contraption I have here does. So um, a comparator measures whether or not there are actually items in the alloy smelter. So if I put this here, it, gives a uh, comparator signal proportional. I Well, I haven't actually checked, but I suspect it's proportional to how full the machine is. So now that there are items in here, it gives a signal. When there's no items, it gives no signal. So let's go first cancel that crafting task. To do that, you need a crafting monitor. So cancel it. Um, all right, get, get this stuff out of here. So yeah, no, no items, no signal. As soon as there are items, it has a signal. Uh, but because the signal strength can be as low as one, I want to, you know I want to disable the machine with any signal, right? So I need a repeater to bump that to a high power signal, and then I just loop it back to the crafter. Uh, this repeater is here so that I don't send a signal to the comparator. So now when I go make that exact same crafting request, Uh, what was it called? Not refined iron, but uh, quartz and rich iron. Right, if I request some of this, it's going to try to craft both. So yeah, as soon as it puts any item... Ooh, I see what happened. I was going to say, as soon as it puts any items in here, it disables and stops putting more items in. But the fact that this uses repeaters means that it takes it a couple seconds for the signal to get back to the crafter. 
And by the time the signal's gotten back to the crafter, it's already put in two sets of items and thus caused it to jam up. Ha, huh, looks like I'm going to have to get a little bit more creative than this then. Um, but yeah, this is why not having uh, blocking mode is a little annoying. You have to do some weird workarounds. Here's my idea. I haven't tried it yet, but I have a redstone transmitter and a redstone receiver on the same channel. Um, because it's not an analog mode, it's either, you know, the output signal is 0 or 15. Uh, I don't think that makes a meaningful difference. But I'm hoping that this will act fast enough that the crafter won't jam two sets of items in before uh, before it's ready for them. Let's try it. So once again, order quartz and rich iron. Go. And... Well, shoot. I guess that didn't work. All right, let's try idea number three here. So this uses a different crafter mode. This is redstone pulse inserts next set. So that what that means is I want to send this a redstone pulse when it empties. And I want to send it, you know, one pulse per event, although it doesn't have to be exactly one pulse per event. Um, anyways, the way I'm doing it is I have a, the, again, a redstone comparator detecting if there's any items inside, a not gate that's nodding that signal. So that's all this stone and torches. And then I'm looping that signal back around. So six times the charm, right? Uh, I need to craft enough that it actually tries to do two recipes at once, and it's still locked because it's waiting for its first redstone pulse. Okay. Experimenting with this a bit more, I think I misunderstood the problem. It's not that it needs to receive an initial pulse to deploy items, it's that it doesn't deploy items on redstone rising edge like I expect. Right, it has its power now. It hasn't deployed items yet. It's actually that it it sends items out on redstone falling edge, which is uh, I find it kind of weird. I mean, if I implemented this, right, redstone pulse sends next set. It sounds a lot to me like rising edge is what um, should send it. But uh, looks like I actually just need the system to give it not a high signal and let it send new items, but I need to give it a actual pulse. Then again, it does say pulse, so I suppose its implementation is not unreasonable. And thus, my solution was to use a sequencer to generate a one tick pulse on Rising Edge. Effectively, it's a Rising Edge detector. Um, if you don't want to use RF tools for this, there's uh, you, you know plenty of vanilla options, monostable circuit type stuff. Anyways, take this. So what this will do is when the uh, as soon as there are no more items in here, in fact, I can even demonstrate, while there are items in here, the comparator turns on, the not gate turns off, which causes this to be off, right? It's in, uh, when a redstone signal is received, loop once. So as soon as the last item is taken out, you saw that blink once, it gives it a very short one tick pulse, which tells it, hey, you're allowed to send the next set of items as soon as there are no more items. And now, if I order a bunch of quartz enriched iron, uh, give me all of this first. All right, so just to be sure, it's going to both craft refined iron and quartz enriched iron. And when we start, uh, the crafter starts ready to put one set of items in if it's idle, which is why you don't have to give it the initial pulse. You just have to give it a repulse as soon as the last item comes out. Now, technically, you. You know, in an ideal world, you repulse it as soon as there are no more inputs, right? But the comparator seems to also measure the output slots. Um, you can probably get a good enough solution by just putting speed upgrades in the importer, such that it imports all four items at once. If you were previously wondering why I didn't just craft more alloy smelters, well, uh, I just encoded all the recipes required to craft alloy smelters. Actually, no, I realized I skipped one. Um, I skipped the recipe to make bricks out of... Uh, well, bricks to make these uh, stone or bricks out of clay, rather. So let's add that recipe as well. I assume that's just a smelter recipe. So these three are alloy smelter recipes. These three are smelter recipes, and everything else is a crafting grid recipe. Just to make alloy smelters, I need nine plus nine. I need eighteen different recipes. 
And 18 is apparently not all there was to it, because I still can't even craft it yet. I'm missing reinforced alloy. So uh, to make this, I have to make infused alloy, which takes more steps. So it's even more than 18 steps to craft um, alloy smelters. So since I'm missing reinforced Rein, bleh, reinforced alloy, I guess the next step is to put an infusing factory on this line. The infusing factory here was a bit more complicated to set up as well. It first of all runs into the same problem as the alloy smelter here. Um, well, I guess, no it doesn't. Uh, if I directly were to plug it into the infusing factory, it wouldn't run into that problem. However, the infusing factory cannot take two different types of input in the same side. That is, there's purple input, and there's red input. So I have to buffer that input in a chest. Or here I used a barrel because a barrel doesn't need the block above it to be open. You know, a chest you can't open here. However, because I'm buffering it in a chest, if I request two sets of crafting, right, for infused alloy and reinforced alloy, uh, apparently if you have more than one stack of output, it, the pattern doesn't show it. But if you um, request more than one item, you know, more than one of these, you could end up in a state where you get the infused alloy put into these slots, but you get the redstone, right? We get a piece of redstone here. Let me get some iron just so I can clear it out afterwards. But you get the redstone put in the purple slot, and now you're deadlocked, right? This redstone will never be consumed by this infused alloy. You have to get the iron in there. Whereas the infused alloy, you know, will sit in here however much there ever is um, and never be, never get put in here. So, uh, I, as a result of that, I had to create the same uh, redstone behavior, right, where it sends only one set of items at a time to the barrel. And if this had, you know, regular blocking mode, it would be perfectly sufficient to not need all this logic, but it doesn't, so we have to hack it together. Anyways, now we should be able to order those alloy smelters. So give me four alloy smelters. All right, this will probably take a little while because it has to craft redstone alloy, red alloy, but hey, it's automated. So I hit start and I can, you know, go do something else while it works. So this alloy smelter starts working. Uh, I imagine our infusing factory works. Our, uh, it might need to hit the enriching, maybe, uh, I did put the enriching factory recipes in as well, but I guess it doesn't need those yet. Um, now it looks like this importer is a little bit slower than the machines, so I made it a stack upgrade. Uh, it just makes it import a whole stack of items at a time. There we go, and now it's fast enough to keep up. All right. Um, now you'll see here for these recipes, I encoded it such that it produces you know four stacks of output. That's to reduce the number of times we have to pulse this crafter, because the more you pulse it, the less you know the more the more downtime you have between crafting tasks. Um, I'll probably do similar changes to these recipes later. So instead of being, you know, three plus one makes four, I can make it three stacks plus one stack makes four stacks. And that just reduces the amount of downtime we spend waiting on outputs. All that crafts, I came over here to take a, a look at my uh, item storage, and it's full. And our essence is full and all that stuff too. So let's t come up with a way to turn this mob farm off when we don't need it. In fact, I came up with a uh, pretty simple solution. Um, there's, remember, there's a bug, or I guess maybe maybe it's a feature where uh, the 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 mob spawning thing here, the uh, mechanical dirt, only works if there's a dirt block underneath it. So I set up a sticky piston that removes the dirt block from it to turn it off, and that functions just as an off switch when I don't want to, you know, run the mob farm such as when our item output is full. So there we have it. It's not a bug all along, it's a feature. Apparently flipping the lever causes red particles for some reason. Wait, it doesn't anymore. Wait a second. Where do those particles come from? I have no clue. My alloy smelter is now done. And I have it set up to receive sand and iron. Now you'll notice here there's only uh, there's less than a stack of each. Normally I would accomplish something like this using Ender Isle's limited item filter. That's kind of my go-to option. Um, however, Ender Isle's not in this pack. And I tried a handful of solutions to try to uh, make this only insert 
like at most one or you know two basically i need to make sure both items had room in here right i tried using mechanism pipes i tried using uh the modular routers mod um i couldn't find a solution other than rf tools to do it so the way i did it with or sorry with uh, xnet the way i did it with xnet was i just had two channels one to insert 32 iron and one to insert 32 sand and then that just makes sure this machine isn't clocked. Then I need a importer to suck the results back into the network. And all that's left is I need some way to say, uh, I'll set redstone mode off and give it a redstone signal once we have enough of this refined iron in our system. The detector is refined storage is equivalent to a level emitter. So I want to configure this to say, once I have above a threshold of refined iron, uh, call it 500 to emit a redstone signal to turn off the machine unlike a level emitter it is non-directional so you, you can't rotate it but it does emit redstone in all directions even though it only appears like it does so upwards so uh, as you saw here when when i had this set to zero the little light bit turns on which causes the machine to stop processing so with this we now automatically make refined iron up to a threshold of 500 and I set up a couple copies of basically the entire setup where I can do uh, other resources. So the ones that come to mind are redstone alloy as well as red alloy. Um, I think those are the two alloys I use the most of. Maybe I'll do the blue alloy as well. I think these three are ones we use a lot of so if i can just get those covered i think that'll be enough i ended up putting refined iron or uh, quartz enriched iron rather as the last alloy smelter recipe to craft on demand here or passively i could add more with uh, more alloy smelters if needed but uh, i looked at it and blue blue alloy isn't used really much outside of rf tools machine frames and if it's only used sparingly i can craft that on demand um the big thing is i really don't want to have to wait for this refined iron because refined iron is used all over the place and as you can see it you know it, you only get one ingot per craft of this right so if you need a like a hundred ingots just say a hundred ingots makes me about 40 patterns refined storage patterns you know i don't want to wait two to three minutes for those that's that's ridiculous um but with passively crafty alloy smelters i don't have to anymore uh hello there how are you doing killed some of your friends earlier as you can see in the upper right for my bad omen debuff but i guess they just keep coming i think these guys spawn during the day too right so just lighting the area up doesn't actually fix the problem uh oh look there's more <laughs> Ooh, one of you has an enchanted crossbow Fancy. Ah, you shot your friend. I love it when auto crafting comes together. Now if I need more crafters, I can just be like, hey, craft me 20 more. And while there's a whole bunch of nested steps here, uh, I don't have to deal with the specifics. You know, I can just hit start. Um, unfortunately, it seems like there's no view crafting status button on the wireless crafting grid i have to actually use the crafting monitor but uh you can see all the crafting kicking along again there's uh some of this is being used in the alloy smelter so that's why this little exclamation point shows up because the machine gets locked between crafting steps but we've already gotten some of our crafters and now i can take these and tack them onto our crafting uh line here haha -ha. With auto crafting set up now, let's move on to improving our energizer energizing orb setup with better energize better and more energizing rods so that we can do more of these energizing orb recipes, which will ultimately lead us into being able to craft better Powa machines. Uh, I've been told that the reactors from Powa create significantly more power than what is actually displayed in the tooltip here. So it displays like 400 or 800 ish that number maybe is per block not per reactor number of reactors uh i don't remember the exact number of blocks but it's a fair number it's like 50 or 60 ish blocks um 
But all this is like 30,000 steps of nested crafting, including using, you know, even Electrum, it's an alloy smelter craft, yada, yada, yada. So um, yeah, because of how much nested crafting there is, I didn't want to do it until we had auto crafting. But now we have auto crafting. Step one, though, is to make more rods. So here are the all the recipes we need to make more basic tier rods. Um, let's get them put into various machines. So most of this is actually just the two by you know three by three crafting grid. The dielectric paste is made in uh, the infuser. So we put this here, and everything else goes in one of these. Where's my? This is the first one that has space. So with any luck, we can request. Uh, let's start with four rods. Looks good to me. Fire. So yeah, we'll start with four rods. That gives us 200 FE a tick. And then we can upgrade them to hardened rods and stuff as we get the higher tier materials. With five basic rods available to us, we can start using the energizing orb. However, I'd also like to understand its mechanics slightly better. First of all, does it emit a redstone signal while, uh, well, is it while there's items in it or? So it does, let's get some actual redstone so we can see the, uh, oh, am I out of redstone? Uh, hold on. So does it, em we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. It seems to emit a redstone signal based on how, approximately how many items are in it. At least it scales with number of items. Good to know. Um, but any items, it has a red zone signal, no items, no signal. Secondly, does it allow any item to be extracted via a hopper or only, looks like only outputs can be extracted. That's good. That means we don't have to worry about filtering the extraction. You know, we, we only extract outputs. So, uh, whoopsies, give me a piece of dirt back, would you? My plan then is to, um, extract items from the energizing or or uh always extract items from the energizing orb supply items with a crafter on something like pulse mode i guess and then just do the same you know pulse generator i did here to loop the comparator signal back into the crafter now before i build that though am i really out of redstone i see zero piece of redstone i must have used it all yeah, because uh, Red Alloy uses it. Okay, um, I guess we have to bring our digital miner back here to the overworld and run it again. I was hoping I wouldn't have to run the digital miner. Yeah, completely out. Okay, I was hoping we wouldn't have to run the digital miner again until uh, I could upgrade it to the RF Tools Builder. But that doesn't appear to be the case. Um, let me go get it. I think it's currently in the nether because that's where I last used it. Moved it back here to the overworld. It's doing its thing again um i could still touch the redstone ore and let's see how much redstone do i get if i process it if i soak touch it i can get up to 12 each if i mine it i'm probably getting closer to six four five five four so it's like four 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 and a half five uh eh, whatever the total amount of re resources i'm generating with the digital miner now it's gonna pale in comparison to like what to what the uh Builder is going to get. The Builder is probably a good 100 times faster than the Digital Miner, so I'm not terribly worried about optimizing it. I just need to have more than zero redstone available for crafting. Uh, I guess first I need to fill this buffer up. There's probably a bunch of things that are just, yeah, waiting for redstone to be available. I might wait. No, that's refined iron. Okay. For a second there, I thought I ran out of iron too. I was like, no way. Yeah. I, I was like, I had 8,000 iron at the start of the the episode what the heck happened no but uh we have plenty of iron just need more redstone with our redstone problem solved i want to get back to testing our orb energizing orb thingy but uh i need some more blaze rods so for now we'll just kill them manually uh i think now that i have looting i should get yeah multiple rods per blaze which is quite convenient i still get lit on fire which is quite inconvenient Food. These ender cores from Pawa seem to be used in quite a lot of things, both within this mod and in other mods. So, uh, it seems like a good first item to use to test our energizing orb setup. So let's encode that recipe and 
this one. We'll drop. In fact, let's even use this here. We'll drop this recipe into the energizing orb. This one into a crafter somewhere. Um, and then I don't. So I, I set up the uh, the redstone logic. It's just a copy of what's over there. So you don't have to look too hard at it. Um, I do need something to pull items out of the energizing orb and put back into the network. So I guess I'll get a importer for that and we can give it a go and see if it works i haven't tested it yet so i probably oopsies probably failed at something hold on did, did that send a pulse yeah it did okay um so what were those things called again something core yeah ender core all right let's try to request four uh yes so items no items Why no items? Oh wait, there it goes. Oh, it had a. It probably was crafting the, uh, the like the frame there, which might take it a little bit of time. All right. Well, uh, it crafts it. It takes the old item out, and then it puts new ones in. So yeah, this uh, this type of automation here seems to work just fine. So again, we're using redstone pulse inserts next set mode to basically emulate blocking mode. Um, that's really why this feature exists uh i don't know why they didn't just make this blocking i mean i guess technically this is more versatile than blocking mode it lets you do things that blocking mode cannot do whereas blocking mode does you know you can emulate blocking mode with this you cannot emulate this mode with blocking you cannot easily emulate this mode with blocking mode to do this with blocking mode you have to use like the chest swappers that i've done before in my previous series so i see i see how um, Redstone Pulse inserts next set mode is, I suppose, uh, more flexible. Given that, I guess it does have value. Anyways, um, it does appear like our setup works here. So, with our energizing orb automated, let's see about using that to upgrade our energizing rods from basic to whatever the next tier is. Uh, blazing? No, hardened. So I think this requires, yeah, these hardened capacitors which is energized steel, which is made in the energizing orb with a you know, bunch of other alloys too, but uh, yeah, I'll just encode recipes and let automation do the, do the heavy lifting. I've encoded all the relevant recipes, and let's see about doing the upgrades. So I could remove some of our basic rods and upgrade them into hardened, um, but I think I'll just create five more hardened rods from scratch and put them on this side here. And then I'll use the hardened rods to upgrade the rest of the basic rods to harden as well. So uh, yeah, this craft actually goes quite fast with uh, with five rods crafting. And I guess it'll only get faster as we add more. Now some of the uh, power, some of these items do take a lot more energy to craft, which is why it's important to have better than basic tier rods. If I just look at the, uh, here, let me get to this page here we go so right now we're crafting things you know 5000 rf but nitro crystals to 20 million right and if you try to you know this this one here is only 10,000. if you try to do 20 million rf at with a uh, a couple hundred a tick it's going to take the better part of forever so i'm not nearly that patient i'm just going to upgrade our rods and our five rods just finished so i can put these on this side uh, all right, they don't stack. There we go, get them all. Let's see. I want the middle rod to be here. So I guess I'll move this one over. Whoopsies. And then I can use the these new hardened rods to upgrade the base, these five basics. And then we'll have ten rods. And each time I need to do more upgrades, I'll upgrade five of these at a time. Um, but anyways, I think that's all the time we have for today. So, uh, with auto crafting out of the way, I think we got our infrastructure laid for the rest of the pack pretty well. Um, there's a lot more resource collection type stuff we need to do, but I think we're ready to ta start tackling the late game challenge. And that is the solar panels. Um, well, no, nah, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. We have to we have to upgrade our power too, right? Uh, just doing an infinite number of solar generate or uh, wind generators is probably not the ideal solution. 
But in any event, this is these are challenges for tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.